Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered, your spot for Calgary Flames Hockey Talk. Christmas break is here. Flames currently in a playoff spot. How are we feeling, fans? Are we excited for the second part of the season? Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Flames Unfiltered, hosted by Brad Brood and Kyle Lewis. Kyle on a little hiatus right now and unfortunately is not with us over the Christmas season. And we're looking forward to having him back in the new year. Big show, Christmas this week. We just got done with Christmas. And hopefully um, everybody out there had a good uh, Christmas with family, friends, safe. Everything good, no honky, as the Calgary Flames have been off for a couple days now. And we're preparing for a big battle Tuesday evening against the Edmonton Oilers. We will talk about that later on in the show, uh, Christmas. Christmas with you know, it's funny. We've got three kids, and so Christmas is, um, <laughs> I don't know, a fairly active time in our household. Uh, but most of my kid, two of my kids are are older now to the age where it's not quite the luster that it has um, when they were all three young. So uh, each year, Christmas changes a little bit in, in, in our house, and uh, <laughs> probably until I have grandkids will it... Uh, uh, will it never be the same? Hockey cards. <laughs> I got a little friend. Uh, he's actually a friend of mine's little boy. He collects hockey cards. And, and, it, and it, it irritates me uh, what's happened to collecting hockey cards. And he texted me yesterday and said that he got uh, 100 hockey cards. And he was pretty pumped. And uh, I don't know. I'm like a little kid at heart when it comes to hockey cards. And I, I want to go see his hockey cards. Uh, I told him that uh, Santa stiffed me. I didn't get any hockey cards this week, this year, and uh, that's the thing that that frustrates me. Um, not that I didn't get hockey cards, but that you can't even find hockey cards like you kid, you like you could when I when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it just seemed like they were so more readily readily available. Um, we went down to the grocery store, the gas station, and um, there was your 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 tops, your OPG. Um, your upper deck and your Fleer, I think back then score, I think had some cards and, and you could pick your pack and it was, oh boy, I'm dating myself here now, a quarter, a pack, or I believe it went to 50 cents a pack and you had your gum in there and, and you, you got, you know, 15 to 25 cards. Now it's $5 a pack and you get like 10 cards or six cards or something silly like that. And, but that's not the part that frustrates me. It, it's, you know, adults have ruined this for, for kids. It's made it where you can't afford to do it and that irritates me and then the the availability of it um as many of you know that that i li- i live in the states um right on the canadian border which you'd think <laughs> it's a, a pretty hockey busy area uh and you'd think that hockey cards would be just um uh, i could get them at, at my at my local gas station and, and that's not true anymore um, they become so collectible that gas stations don't even handle them anymore, and it's 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 frustrating. Um, my youngest daughter said, "Dad, I, w- I I wouldn't mind some hockey cards for Christmas." And so, and and quite honestly, I was thinking about buying myself a pack or two because I like opening them and seeing and seeing who I get. So I shop around town to get to get hockey cards, and I can't even find hockey cards. Um, the day before Christmas, I'm going through uh, a lids store, a hat store. Of all places, I come around the corner and there is upper deck packs, uh, upper deck elite boxes or whatever they're called now, or special boxes and all these expensive ones. And then there's a complete set there, and I I, I couldn't believe it. I, I I couldn't believe it. Finally, I I find my hockey card place, and I I can't believe it. And it's a hat store. I I, I don't understand. Calgary's fan base. Um, we have the greatest fans in the, in the league, and and many of them are, are right here listening, and, and that's that's wonderful. But there is things that crack me up in this fan base, and and I I I'm as guilty as anybody else that's listening to this about knee jerk crazy, um, fire them, trade them, and, and all these crazy things that that we that we all post, and and, and I'm I'm there too. I'm I'm not immune from that. Um, I did see something really funny this week. On Facebook, one of the uh, 
um, Facebook Flames groups that I'm, that I'm part of, which I recommend everybody go out and, and do it. There's a whole bunch of them, Calgary Flames fans, uh, Flames Hub. But there, there's a whole bunch of really, really good ones. where there, There's a lot of good people. Um, on the Calgary Flames fans one, um, I had to really chuckle this week. Uh, after, I believe it was, the, I, I believe it was the St. Louis loss, I believe. Uh, he just wrote, plain and simple, I think we should fire Harvey. And uh, I, I laughed. And that was from a, a, a Dion Stro- Stro- Stroker. I hope I said that right. But uh, I, that one made me laugh. And I got a few good chuckles out of that. Today on the show, we got a lot to talk about. A five games, one short of a six pack to talk about as, as far as games go. Um, some small changes to our broadcasting schedule last week. So we shuffled it during the Christmas break a little bit um, just to kind of spread it out, uh, to kind of ease the workload over the holiday season for us here at the show. And uh, basically to have something to talk about because we are on a break. And then we will discuss some Flames news, some schedule, odds, uh, where the Flames sit at the Christmas break, uh, the hurdle suspension. I got to get your take on that one. Call-ups, injury updates, all that good stuff. And then I want to know, I want to talk about Jonathan Huberdo and what our expectations really are and where his results are so far. And then why he doesn't shoot the damn puck. And then we will roll into the line tweaking that's been going on, the success that that's brought, whether we like that or not. Uh, And then we'll wrap with a preview of four games, including a regular season, the final regular season, Battle of Alberta. Sit back, relax. It is time for Flames Unfiltered. Lots and lots of games to recap, and uh, we'll cruise. We'll cruise through. There, there's, there's a lot to talk about, but not a lot to talk about. I know many of you want it, your your hockey talk fixed today, but uh, also want to roll on with your your holidays. Uh, Friday, almost a week. Well, no, not quite a week. What am I talking about? St. Louis comes to Calgary, and uh, not a good night. St. Louis pounds the Flames five to two. Markstrom in net. Um, Flames, we get two goals from Connor Mackey. How crazy is that? Lindholm has a huge giveaway in the first uh, that creates a goal, and it just seems like everybody was deflated after that, and that's not, Lindholm is not our guy that I, that I expect to be turning the puck over a whole bunch, and I felt bad for him on this one. It happened, and God, God, I defend Lindholm a lot, don't I? Probably too much, huh? I don't know. Anyways, we dominated early, or they dominated early. They outshot uh, seven to one to start. Uh, bad line change um, created the third goal for the Blues. Mackey gets his second of the game. How crazy is that? And then just minutes later, it's three to two. Mackey gets that second goal. Everything looks to be going good for Calgary. And Whammo, Slamo, Bamo, Mackey throws a pizza up the middle and uh, they score. I didn't think Markstrom was great in this game. I didn't think he was horrible, um, but still still didn't like his game. Um, after being a healthy scratch for three games, Milan Lucic entered, played 13-39 of five on five, which is a lot. Um, he played more than a Lindholm. He played more than Majapani and led the Flames with eight shifts in the third period, which I don't understand. Don't understand. The Flames need a goal, and we got Milan Lucic out there. Don't get it. Sunday, Calgary goes on the California road trip. First stop, San Jose. Markstrom in net again. And this one started out picture perfect. Picture perfect. As uh, San Jose with a big turnover, Toffoli gets them on the board. one nothing. It is 1-1 after 1. Lucic makes it 2-1 to one with his first goal from last, since last March in the second period. Flames 2-1. to one. Lindholm add one's on, add, adds one. Lindholm adds another. 
Dubé adds another, and it's a five to one hurdle scores later on in the third period. And uh, the Flames roll to a 5 2 victory. One of those victories we've been waiting for a long time where we didn't have to worry and struggle. And I don't know. I thought the third goal for the Flames, that power play goal with Huberto from Lindholm, or Lindholm gets a pass from Huberto, and it is, boy, was it beauty. Penalties creeped into the third period again for this team. And uh, one scary moment is when Zadorov blocks a shot with his wrist and heads off to the locker room. That was probably mid third period did not return a part. I wanted to talk about in this game that I just did not understand. And that was when Gilbert, who was just called up, just called up, gets into a fight with Johan. I'm going to say his name wrong. Gadjevich. Tough guy for the for the Sharks, and uh, he, he hits the best of Gilbert. He freaking KOs him is what he did. And Gilbert went off and left and now is on IR. Now, I'm not, I, I'm all about fighting in hockey, but I'm, I'm not about, hey, buddy, let's go, and we go on the next faceoff. I don't like that staged crap. I think it's bad for the game. I don't think it's good for the players. I don't know how it pumps players up. But now if two guys are scrumming in front of the net, there's a cross check back and forth, high stick here and there, and the gloves go off and they go. Hell yeah. That's what fighting in hockey should be, right? Heat of the moment. But Gilbert finally gets his moment in the sun and then gets KO'd and, and is now out. So figure figure that one out. Uh, one other thing in this game that, that happened, uh, it was the start of the third period. Tomas Hurdle high sticks Elias Lindholm with like a, well, first Lindholm gives him two monster cross checks right off the face. Off. I don't understand how this happens, why there's animosity at that point. But right off the face off, he cranks him with two good solid cross checks. And then Lindholm kind of starts to back up and Hurdle gives him kind of a, he looked like he went to cross check him, missed him because Lindholm was backing up and, and hit him in the face. He gets a two game suspension for this, which I think is maybe a little much. And the reason I say that is you have to be responsible for your stick, but based off previous suspensions in the league this year, this one makes absolutely no sense. It makes absolute no sense. I don't understand what's going on in this league anymore and where they're determining the punishment levels. And now this is coming from the a flames guy. I don't understand this one. Anyways, hurdles out for the next game, which was just two days later when Calgary, when a weird scenario is back in San Jose, they stay for two straight games. And this one gets off um, better than ever scripted as the Tyler to Foley and Dylan Dubé team up for two goals in 30 seconds, one at 15 second mark, one at the 30 second mark to set a new record for the Calgary frames for the two quickest goals. The previous record was 32 seconds back in March 11th, 1987 in Hartford, Doug Risenbrough and Colin Patterson. Well, you young guys don't know who those two guys are. Both good players. Markstrom did get the start in net and this one and, uh, Whammo bammo, we are up two to nothing, 30 seconds in, and you couldn't uh you couldn't get any better. And another thing this game showed me is that Eric Carlson, as much as he's putting up points in this league, if he's even in the consideration for the Norris, I'm gonna flip shit. Because this guy is the biggest defensive liability in the National Hockey League. I'm sorry, if this guy wasn't putting up points and he was not Eric Carlson, he would be on waivers. It's bad. He is bad, bad, bad defensively. Crazy. The bad part happened here. Zadorov. good part is he's back in the game after his wrist injury. But the bad part is, is he fumbles a pass from Stone late in the first and the Sharks capitalize and they draw it within one in a period that they had no business even being close. They were completely and utterly dominated. And all I'm thinking is, here we go again. As the Sharks add another one in the second to bring it to three to two. And it's like, 
Calgary gets up three to one and we got to put a nail in the coffin and we can't put a nail in the coffin. We're dominating the game, but we can't put a nail in the coffin. And then it happens. Milan Lucic, who I've been critical of all year, makes his best play of the year and uh, gets a, a really nice pass up to, to Kadri to send him in. And uh, after Timo Myers ties it up three, three, he, he solidifies it. Kadri scores. It's four to three. And then the floodgates open. Milan Lucic makes it five to three. Um, and then the fourth line adds one and everything goes well. And Calgary um, ends up get scoring seven. <laughs> it just exploded into that in the third period. Finally, another, you know, and another game where I felt like we, we were rolling and when we looked good and a lot of, a lot of people asked me, well, are we only rolling? Cause we're playing San Jose and, and that, yeah, I don't know. Maybe two nights later in Los Angeles, um, Vladar gets a start this night. I thought Calgary had a pretty darn good game in this one. Huberto gets them going right away. One, nothing game. Vlardy scores. It's one, one, no scoring in the second Calgary. This is, this is where it gets important here. Calgary gets down two as Daniel scores and Blake Lazat scores for the Kings. It's three to one and things look down and out. Um, I thought Vladar was good, not amazing, but pretty darn good. Uh, but the flames keep cheap chipping away and they only had three shots in the first had a great defensive period, but then things and the tide starts to turn to fully scores a goal from, I think long distance, um, mid third to bring it to three to two. And then Dylan Dubé ties it up at the 1332 mark. And we're three, three, and we're heading to overtime with the Los Angeles Kings. Los Angeles scores 90 seconds in, and we lose the bonus point, which has been another problem for this team. All stinking season. We do get one point, but the, uh, the flames go down four to three to Los Angeles. The very next night on a back-to-back and the final game we're going to talk about and the longest game recaps in show history. Yeah, it is the longest. The Anaheim Ducks and Flames, Calgary just all over the Ducks this night. Fire off 45 shots, win 3-2 in overtime. Another game that I felt that we should have um, stepped up and walked away. Michael Stone scores first uh, on a shot from the point. Mason McTavish ties it up. In the second, Brett Ritchie scores his sixth of the year. And this is the point right here. This is the point where I thought we needed to buckle down, pull it together a little bit better, and this is where we need to finish them off. And and that did not happen. As uh, the, the pesky Ducks hung in there the whole time and penalties haunted this team and just lack of composure a little bit in the third period. Silverberg ties it up late. And this team, the Flames hit tons of posts, man. There was more posts in this game than I can remember in, in, in a long, long time. Um, so that, that was another crazy aspect of this game. But the Flames end up to get that bonus point finally. Oh, finally, as Rasmus Anderson puts in the puck in overtime and the Flames get two out of uh, Anaheim. And this was one of those games that it frustrated me a little bit in the fact that I felt like it should just should have been a lot easier, right? It should just should have been a lot easier. That's not how it went. But um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about... Um, where the flames are right now. And uh, one thing I wanted to touch on quickly are the board of governors beings. Um, they talked about the schedule format a little bit and, and, and where we're going to go with that. And it looks like they want to maybe add two games to the season. They want to add more divisional play, whether that be four or five games um, is, is yet to be determined. Uh, I hated it when it was the North division and we played Edmonton. I believe it was eight, was it eight times? I believe that's way too many, but I do think, we need to find a happy medium and, and three times is just not enough. I think that five mark uh, for divisional opponents, all divisional opponents, not just Edmonton, all divisional opponents um, is where it should be. Now let's talk about where the flames are right now as we're going to kind of cruise through this section. Well, Daryl Sutter had made it very clear that he thought it was very, very important to be in a playoff spot at the Christmas break. Well, we're at the Christmas break, and, and where the hell are the Flames? The Flames currently right now, as we get ready to play hockey again on Tuesday, sit in the second wild card spot with 39 points. They are 
currently in the fourth spot in the Pacific, one behind Seattle at the Christmas break. So right now, if the playoffs started today, guess what? Calgary Flames take on the Vegas Golden Knights. I don't know if that's the end of the world. If you want good news is the Edmonton Oilers are not in the playoffs. That's really good news as they currently sit one point back of the Flames. St. Louis lingering, Nashville lingering, but not looking great. And Vancouver, uh, six points out of a playoff spot, but oh yeah, they've been pesky lately. They've been looking really good. So where does that land the odds? Now, the odds at the beginning of the year were very high for the Flames. And last week, they were at a, a season low. But with wins in San Jose, a point in LA, and then two points in Anaheim, things have changed. Calgary's moved up the standings, and people's perspectives, and Vegas's perspectives, uh, and a couple other websites' perspectives have changed on where the Flames are, are going to sit. And I, and I found it interesting, and as I was looking at Money Puck, which I think everybody should go look at that website because it's it's interesting. They currently have the Flames 88.2% chance of making the playoffs. They have them at 52.5% chance to make it to the second round. Yes, that's higher than the Edmonton Oilers, who are at 38.2 for that. Flames are 30.9% chance to make the third round. 17.2% chance of making the finals, which I think is very, very very generous and very high, and they have a 9.1% chance of winning the Stanley Cup just for other divisional. That is the second highest, by the way. As the only one higher is the Toronto Maple Leafs at 9.6, which I find it ironic that two Canadian teams are the top two predicted. <laughs> What's the odds of that? Let's talk about some other teams in the division. Uh, man, I... <sighs> Just to to win the Stanley Cup, it's nobody else in the Pacific is ranked higher. Edmonton five point four. Just kind of looking at their wheel here. Yeah, that's the next closest one for anybody in the Pacific. Let's switch on over to the Athletic, which this is this is a pretty darn good one. And they got Calgary rated at a ninety two percent chance to make the playoffs. That's pretty high. Projected points at one on one hundred one point three. Flames are going to have to kick it in the rear to do that. They're 22% chance to make it to the conference final, 15% chance to make it, or excuse me, take that back, 15% chance to make it to the conference final, 11% chance to make it to the Stanley Cup final, which is really, really high. Holy mackerel. And an 8% chance of winning the Stanley Cup. Only teams higher, the Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs, Colorado, or Carolina Hurricanes have the exact same amount. Those are the only teams higher than the Calgary Flames. And we have complained all year and pitched all year about the Calgary Flames and how they've played. Were our expectations just too high? I don't know. El Athletic also breaks down the Pacific Division, has Calgary a 23% chance of taking first in the Pacific, Edmonton 9, Vegas 59. Or 33% chance of taking second. 22% chance of taking third, 14% chance of taking fourth, 7% chance of taking fifth. Poof. Everybody's got us in the playoffs. <laughs> this better be a good start right out of the bat after Christmas break. Let's run through the call-ups real quick. On the 18th, Dennis Gilbert was called up. Nick DeSimone was called up on the 20th. Radam Zahorna was sent back on the 20th to the AHL Wranglers on the 24th. Uh, Nick DeSimone and Matthew Phillips were assigned to the AHL Wranglers. Now, that, I would assume, one of the two, or maybe both of the two, will be reassigned on the 27th, um, which is tomorrow. Uh, this saves us some cap space, right? Yeah, we might as well gather up as much as we can. Some injuries. Uh, Tanif, who was injured in that Montreal game a couple weeks ago in the face, was placed on IR on the 18th. He did return to play in the second game in San Jose. First game in San Jose. First game in San Jose. He came back. So Horna didn't play against the Sunday game against San Jose due to illness. Gilbert placed on IR. We talked about that earlier from getting KO'd. But you know what? All in all, when you look at our roster coming out of the Christmas break, and that's the point of talking about this, is we don't look too bad injury-wise heading out of this. So that is a good sign if you're a Calgary Flames fan. As last year we we were unscathed all year on injuries, and uh, I like where we're sitting in, in that aspect. So um, good news there as we come out of the Christmas break.
Let's talk Jonathan Huberto. And man, oh man, did people get fired up after that Kings game and mad at Jonathan Huberto. As he passed up a third period opportunity to shoot the puck in the slot, and he passed up a big one in, in overtime. Kind of, in a way, two of them in overtime. The second one resulting in the puck transitioning in the other direction and the Kings goal, which frustrated the fan base terribly and left us all, myself including, screaming for Jonathan Huberto to shoot the puck. Huberto was asked after the game, and he said, I, I think you saw it. I've got to shoot. I've always been like that. It sucks. I got to shoot. Obviously, I try to make the pass for an empty net. Um, I, I try to make a pass for an empty net for the other guy, but I, I have to keep it simple and shoot the puck. You know, and I agree, he does. But we can't also, in Flames land, change Jonathan Huberto in, in who he is. He's always been known as a prolific passer in the league. His record last year of 115 points was because of his assists. But I do also think on the flip side of that, that he does, he, he possesses that ability to score. So I do, I, I do want to see him shoot more because I, I do believe that he, that he can score. He's got a career shooting percentage of 12.5, which is about league average. But this year it's, it's sitting at 10. But I also think that this year a lot of his shots have been not key scoring opportunity shots. I think a lot of his key opportunity scoring shots, he's passed up with passes. So right now, he's on pace to score. Okay, he's let me let me look at my my notes here. He's on pace to to, to have thirteen point six seven goals this year. His five year average. I just took the last five years was twenty six goals a season, and his all time season high was thirty. Now he's on pace to do forty six point four seven assists this year, which I think he'll get way more, and I think he'll get way more goals because I think he's trending upward. Right after a real hard start, I think Jonathan Huberto is trending upward. Now his five year average for assists is fifty seven, so he's only ten off of that right now, and his season high was last year at eighty five assists. Will he get there this year? Oh no, no way, no way. But. I, I I don't see why he can't get to 65. Now he, he's on pace to score 60.13 points for the Flames this year. Now his five year average is 83, and his high is 115 last year. Will he get to this five year average? Oh, it's, it's going to be a push. But I, but I think that that it's capable. He's capable. He looks like a different player. He's moving much quicker. Um, he's in those scoring chances a lot more. And that's really all we can ask right now, and we just hope that statistics catch up and the puck starts going in for him. His role's always been a setup man. It was in Florida. We, we, you know, we 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 were were wrong, and when and we were wrong in our thinking that he's going to come here and be, you know, a sniper. He's not. He, he's a he's a goal scorer. He's a situation guy that that sets up goals. He's being played in the key situations now. He's getting the chances. I think we all need to relax on expectations. You guys, we did this to Sam Bennett. Now, his expectations were different. He, Because he was a first-round pick, we had these grandiose expectations of Sam Bennett. And a fan, as a fan base, I think every all of us have to admit that we never really gave him a chance to achieve those. Now, Jonathan Huberto is going to be here for a long, long time, whether we like it or not. And I like it. I know some people don't in this fan base, but but I do. And I like what I see. I like what I've seen. I do agree with all of you. He does need to shoot more. But I think that maybe that situation in L.A. will help. Maybe that will spark him to shoot the puck more. Maybe that's exactly what we needed. But I do think we need to relax as a fan base. Well, we have this guy for a long, long time, and he's going to be a good Calgary Flame. But you know what? We need to let him progress. (music) 
All right, let's talk line combos. As they went into the blunder a little bit this week. Some weird, weird line combos. And uh, I don't know. I'm surprised a little bit about them. Let's go through it. I'll give you my take on them. The first line, uh, Dylan Dubé was moved up over to the, onto the left wing with Elias Lindholm and Tyler Toffoli. I think Lindholm's trending upward. He's been really, really good lately, really effective, putting up lots of points. Tyler Toffoli has been way, way above my expectations this year. Um, he's probably our best pure goal scorer right now on the team, whether we like it or not. He leads the team in goals, I believe. Dylan Dubé looks like another, uh, looks like a different player than he did um, just three weeks ago. Um, he's playing with confidence. Um, he's getting himself into the right situations. He's using his speed. Uh, and Dylan Dubé has been real effective. Did I think we'd have Dylan Dubé on the first line? No, but I don't, I don't hate this line. Now, the second line has Kadri centering Jonathan Huberto, which I think Huberto's been better with Kadri. I do. So I don't hate that. Milan Lucic on the right-hand side of the second line. Now, I'm going to preface this by having to fess up and say that his play in the San Jose game, the second one, was his best game by a mile. The goal he set up for Nazem Kadri to put the team ahead was probably the best play I've seen Milan Lucic make since coming to Calgary. But having Milan Lucic in this spot puzzles me a little bit. And, and as we get through the lines here, I'll talk about it and and I'll I'll tell you who I'd plug in there. Now, Michael Backlund centering the third line, Machapani on the left, Blake Coleman on the right. Blake Coleman's given me everything that, that I can ask for. Michael Backlund, for the most part, has. Um, I think he needs to score sometime soon. He hasn't scored for freaking ever. Now, I don't expect... Michael Backlund to be our biggest goal scorer, but he does have to chip in um, with goals. Um, I think he does a hell of a job centering that third line. Maja Pani has been a little quiet in my mind, um, but you know what? Getting in with Backlund probably will change that, right? Seems to be the elixir in Calgary quite often. The third line has been Richie, Lewis, and Rosiska. Now, Rosiska have kind of fallen out of favor with Coach Sutter, and I'll be honest with you, with myself. I get this guy frustrates me more than any other player on this team besides Milan Lucic. Because I know Adam Rosiska can be a good hockey player. I just feel like sometimes he chooses not to. Is that terrible to say? But sometimes I do feel that way. I feel like he chooses not to take that step. Not to be engaged all the time. He's I, I tweeted it the other day. I felt bad after I did it, but it's goddamn true. He's the softest 6-4 player in the National Hockey League. He goes down on checks more than anybody I've ever seen for his size and weight. He doesn't initiate any body contact. It's just, I don't know. And you know what? He's like my kid. When he scores early in the game, he's like a different player the rest of the game. Now, I think everybody is to an extent, but he it's visible. I, I see it in him. This guy's got to figure this out or he's going to be the odd man out. He's, he's going to. He's getting his chance. He's proven to put up points this year. He's put up points for a while. He was leading the team. This guy has to, absolutely has to bring it every single night, both offensively, defensively, and physically. Every single night, and he's not doing it. And I wouldn't mind us sliding him up, taking Lucic's spot on the second line, and just seeing what happens with Cadre, Huberdo, and Rosiska. And when I look at our offensive base here, and I see Lucic on the right-hand side of that second line, is that screaming, screaming for a trade partner and bringing someone into that second line? Holy cow. Quickly go through the defense. Hannafin's been with Anderson. Weger with Tanev, Zadorov, and Stone. We've seen Mackey. We've seen De Simone. We've seen some good Mackey, some bad Mackey. We saw... D. Simone's been fine for the most part. We really didn't see much of Gilbert. He was here, got KO'd, and yeah, didn't see much after that. I, I don't know where we're at or how we feel. I, I don't know that this team is going to get Oliver Shillington back this year. If I had to put down a 1000 bucks right now, i say he is not coming back this year. I have no insight on that other than I just my gut tells me he's not. But that being said, I do think Michael Stone is a great asset to this team. I think he's a great defenseman. 
but I love him in our seventh defense spot where he can slide in in certain situations. One defenseman short. We're one right winger short. We're one defenseman short. Sadly, I have no idea how in God's green earth we're going to have enough cap space. Much less, I don't know if any of you Flames fans have done this, but if you looked ahead to see where we're going to be sitting cap space next year at this time, I have no idea. If it only goes up a million, we're in big, big trouble next year. So I think, you know, when you look at our roster, we're two holes away. I do like where our game is trended, though. Now I know some of our opponents out on the West Coast were a little bit easier. But, you know, sometimes, what am I saying sometimes? A lot of the time, sports is confidence-based. I remember when I played it, it was confidence-based. You, you get rolling. You feel good about your game. You, you, the puck goes in, whether it be a, a, a softy or not. Like it, it builds confidence in you. It builds confidence in your team and your line mates, and everything starts to gel together. And that's when good things start to happen. And I think that's what's happening in Calgary right now. And I think this California trip was exactly what we needed. Now we got some guys that need to find their game. I'd, I'd love to see Michael Backlund pop one in. I'd like to see Huberto get a couple goals, not just assists. Um, I, I love what Lindholm, Dubé, and Toffoli are doing. Keep that going. Um, Blake Coleman's been amazing in my mind. And and Brett Ritchie, is, he's a perfect fourth liner, man. He chips in with a weird, odd goal. His timing on his goals is amazing. Um, and Trevor Lewis is, is exactly where it's at. I, I think Milan Lucic, um, if he plays like he has this last week, is a great spot on, on the fourth line and and put him with Lewis and Richie, and I'll take that fourth line any day of the week. Adam Raziska needs to prove something to me. Andrew Majapani needs to prove something to me. And and slightly, uh, Michael Backlin offensively needs to prove something to me. And Nazem Kadri, in a way, needs to give me a little bit more uh, offensively. Even though I, I'm not mad at the way his game is went. But he needs to give me just a little bit more. I'm surprised kind of where we're at heading the Christmas, or at the Christmas break. Not heading in, coming out of it. I didn't think a week ago... Well, let's put it this way. After the Blues game, I didn't think there's no way in hell we're going to be able to squeeze seven out of eight points on the California trip and get past the Edmonton Oilers into a playoff spot at Christmas break. But I do agree with Daryl Sutter that these markers, whether it be the American Thanksgiving or the Christmas break, are markers where you need to hit them. And you do need to be in those playoff spots. And... We also, a lot of us said at the beginning of the year that we don't expect this Calgary team maybe to win the Pacific, but we sure expect a long cup run. And I don't know, Flames fans, are we building in the right direction towards that or are we not? Because some days, I, I like right now, today, I feel like we are. But, you know, if you'd asked me a week ago, I would have said we're nowhere near that. So I think one of the things coming out of the Christmas break that we really need to see is consistency. That is probably the most important thing that we need to see. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, team updates, and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. All right, Flames fans, time to preview. The Flames have been on a Christmas break. They're flying back, or they flew back Friday night um, to have a little bit, a little bit of time off, and they will hit the ice again on Tuesday as the Edmonton Oilers come to town. Um, I'm pulling up the media schedule now to see if they are practicing on Monday, but I believe that is a mandated league off. Yep, it is off. Next time we're going to see the Flames hit the ice is uh, 10.30 a.m. pregame skate. To preview that Battle of Alberta, let's do that right now. This is going to be the final meeting of the Battle of Alberta this year, which is a travesty. On October 
15th in Edmonton, Calgary beat the Oilers four to three. The Oilers gave it right back to them uh, four days later in Calgary with a three to two win. So we split points this year. This is going to be the money game. And it's going to be a real interesting game as the Oilers are probably at a, a season low in confidence uh, coming off a couple of really bad losses, the teams they should have beat. And the Flames are probably, I don't know, are we at a, at a high? No, we're not at a high because when we were 5-1, and one, it was at a high. We're probably at our, our highest point since that start, right? Edmonton currently sits fifth in the Pacific, 38 points, one point behind our Flames. And uh, both teams really are in a similar situation, lacking consistency and struggling to find um, a five-game stretch of, of good hockey. Does that make sense? Yeah. And wonky goaltending, too, a little bit, huh? Wednesday, the next night, Calgary hops on a plane and heads to Seattle. Seattle currently third in the Pacific, one point ahead of the Flames, huh? but three games in hand. So Seattle's sitting, sitting pretty. This is a second of three meetings. Seattle beat the Flames 5-4 to four in Calgary on November 1st. A busy week continues on Saturday. Hockey Night in Canada, Vancouver heads into Calgary. Vancouver currently six in the Pacific, six points behind the Flames. But this Vancouver Canucks team, I've called them crappy. I've called them junk all year. But they find a way to win, and they've been doing that as of late, beating some really good hockey teams, uh, including the Oilers. And, uh, yeah, they find a way to, to rack up points each and every night. This is the second of four meetings with the Canucks as uh, Vancouver beat the Flames um, in a shootout 4-3 to three just a few days ago, December 14th. Uh, in Calgary. Tuesday, Calgary hits the road again as they travel to Winnipeg to take on the Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg rolling, currently second in the central with an impressive 43 points. Who saw this coming? I actually did. I actually predicted Vancouver to take second in the Pacific or in the central. I'm going to toot my own horn on that one because not many people had the Jets doing as well this year, but they've been really good under Rick Bonus. And uh, that'll be a fun game and a very interesting game. The second of three meetings between the two teams. Calgary beat Winnipeg in Calgary on the 12th of November, uh, three to two in another good tight one goal game. You know, when I type this up every week and I do these uh, these previews and recaps, it's like one goal game, one goal game, one goal game. Man, yeah, maybe break that trend here and and, and fire off a few goals here and. Uh, and change that a little bit, but uh, I don't know. We'll take the points anyway we can get them. Probably one of the better weeks of her hockey in uh, of the year as uh, the World Juniors kick off. And that starts today as we record this and as we release this podcast. Um, so we got World Juniors, we got the Flames Battle of Alberta, we got a Vancouver Canuck rivalry hockey night in Canada Saturday night. Whoo, Flames fans! This is going to be a fun, fun, fun week of hockey. Christmas behind us, the new year ahead of us. Enjoy this busy holiday week filled with great hockey games. Stay safe, have a blast, be careful, uh, enjoy time with family and friends, and enjoy lots of Flames action as we get some big rivalry games. We need two points in the Battle of Alberta. I don't know. Till next week, we'll talk Flames hockey again. Kyle will be back next week. Can't wait to have that. Check out flamesunfiltered.com for all the past episode. Enjoy your hockey week, Flames fans. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. Check out the Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Host Brad Brood is on Twitter at Brad Brood, and host Kyle Lewis is on Twitter at Van Lewis14. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Flames Unfiltered can be found on all the major podcast players. Want to watch the show? You got it. Check out Inside Edge Hockey Media Group for every show. Subscribe while you watch. Thanks for listening, watching, and interacting. Enjoy the hockey action. We call them play on! Yeah, baby! Play on! Yeah, baby! Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk.
This episode of Flames Unfiltered was copyrighted and produced by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.